Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I've recently been trying to fly the PMDG DC-6 across the Atlantic unsuccessfully. Now this is on me because I haven't watched the official tutorials on the plane, but I'm also generally interested to see how payware planes like this can break anyway. I want to fly the DC-6 around the world, but I decided to try it out on the most difficult planned leg first from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil to Lagos in Nigeria. As you can see, this is pushing the range of the plane, though not to its absolute limit. Since it's a fairly long flight, I would also be seeing the reliability of the autopilot. So let's take a look at how things went. As you can see, we have full realism options. At least I assume that enabling those means that it's realistic. I'm not 100% sure, though I did retain the GPS, the GNS430. And here I am disabling the gust lock, which I learned about. And for this first flight, I went full power. And so I enabled the superchargers right away. And in retrospect, uh, and for the subsequent flights, I decided that that was probably a bad idea. So actually, I think we only have the superchargers on two engines looking at the manifold pressures there. So there's us taking off from uh, Rio and a nice sight of the city. Well, that's sort of the suburbs it looks like there. So everything going well so far, kind of, but I'm pushing the engines hard. You can see the red indicators on the iPad there. Um, whether the iPad is a good indication of stuff, I don't know, but I got them into the green uh, by adjusting the throttle and such. Uh, there are obviously still some other problems with the oil pressure and all, and also the carburetor temperature. And it's possible that I need to warm up the carburetors first ahead of time. But we lose one engine. You can see one engine just died there from the manifold pressure on the right hand side. And I had to compensate for that. And there you can see that indicator on the engine stress visualizer. I decided to try out repairing the engine in flight. You can see there is an option repair engine one there. Engine one is the one that died. And so I clicked that, but the result is that engine one decided to provide more power and also consume more fuel uh, than the other engines. Now it's spiked up and yeah, anyway, so I decided that it would be best to just return to the airport. We didn't make it very far, you can see from the map. So yeah, the engine died pretty darn quickly given the way I was pushing it and I learned a lesson. And here we are landing again. So we will have to do version number two. You can see engine one is still providing more power and consuming more fuel than the others until we land and I idle everything. Now this time I decided to repair all the engines on the surface, uh, probably a good thing, and also service the propellers and do all the other things. Make sure everything is as good as possible before we take off on this very long flight. And I also left the superchargers off on takeoff. Though we're still pushing the manifold pressure pretty high there, I back off of that and get into the yellow range for liftoff. But we did have it uh, pretty high up on the manifold pressure initially. All right, well, we barely get off the ground like this. Uh, yep, that's a little bit dodgy. But we do, and this time things are looking a little bit better. I'm being more moderate about the settings. And you can see the indicators on the engine stress visualizer. We have a oil temp issue, that's the yellow ones. And I still have the carburetor de-icers on. So again, I think one thing I'll change on another flight, I mean, I'll keep trying this stuff, is to just uh, warm up the carburetors earlier. Obviously I'm starting the aircraft, uh, I, I'm not doing the startup procedure, it's uh, starting up automatically, so. Might also want to do the full startup procedure. You can see the cow flaps now in cruise as we've reached a higher altitude. I tried to do negative two, I don't know what the effect of that is. Negative two degrees on the cow flaps. Probably I should just leave it to zero. Now the carburetor de-icers are off because th that's fine. The only problem we have on the pad there is the oil pressures are in yellow. So we are head out over the Atlantic and 
things are looking okay as far as I could tell. I still got the superchargers on though, because without them it starts going really slow and slower than the 13 hours that I was expecting for this flight. So I decided to leave them on to help with that, but our fuel consumption is actually too high right now. So it's possible that I have to expect a slower flight across the Atlantic. I try and figure out the autopilot and that's gyro pilot that has to be enabled first and then the, the order is gyro pilot then the main autopilot then the altitude control but I'm just trying to fill around with it to see what goes on the main autopilot uh, lever is down there and eventually there we go pull that up and see the effects of that I haven't activated the altitude control so that's on just checking everything else and here we can see that it's sort of stabilized as far as the heading and I check our heading take a look at stuff the pad shows engine 2 has a yellow oil pressure but otherwise everything else is fine I'm most concerned about the fuel at this point so I'm taking a look at the fuel compared to our fuel flow you can see the fuel flow indicators there hopefully and yeah we're consuming fuel a little bit too fast so on the one hand we need to probably turn off the superchargers in order to get the fuel flow under control and I think I did there uh, but then we go so slow that it's gonna take forever to get across the Atlantic which isn't necessarily efficient either right there's a sweet spot between those you want to go the right speed at the right fuel flow Alright, so I activate the altitude control and it starts stabilizing the altitude and it looks like the autopilot is doing good things. So, it is already two hours into the flight. I was flying manually for two hours. And so I decided to leave it on autopilot and uh, fix my camera on the panels so that uh, I would go off and do other things but I'd uh, get the information I need to diagnose if something goes wrong. But anyway, taking a look around, you can see the supercharger is still on. And I think this is the fixed spot on the panel. And there, one engine dies. That's after an hour and a half of autopilot. So we are three and a half hours into the flight. And that's obviously not good. So uh, this is all on autopilot now. I didn't pay attention to it until I saw it had crashed. It did crash. And so it's all doing in its own stuff and one engine died a few minutes later uh, we would have another engine die but you can see the autopilot is losing ground here because it's we're not throttling up the other engines in order to compensate for the lost engine and so the speed has gone down and it can't really hold on anymore and I think another engine dies here let's see there we go. Uh, I'm, uh, obviously, bits have been cut out. It takes a few minutes for each of the engines to die, but all of this occurs within like maybe 10 minutes. And so the other two, as we get lower, their relative manifold pressure is higher. And now we're down to just one engine. Uh, note that when the first engine died, its fuel flow actually increased. So maybe it was a fuel leak that actually caused it. I am absolutely not sure about the diagnosis though and yeah I will have to do some studying up probably but it is interesting to see you know just to try things out and see what might work it's experimentation to some extent I feel like maybe I don't want to watch the tutorials and just sort of fill around with it uh, to see if I can get uh, you know it's better it's a better way to learn really Failing, I mean. Learning by failure is certainly something that I have uh, appreciated thanks to Kerbal Space Program. So here we are again. Uh, though this obviously takes quite a lot longer. But at least the autopilot seems to do fine. Actually, it's doing an admirable, admirable job uh, hanging on to things. Considering it can't throttle up. It has no auto throttle. So anyway, all our engines died and we slammed into the ocean. And yeah, not pretty, but I try again. And here we go. This time I was intent on being exceedingly conservative. I wanted to keep everything in green. 
and there's the de-icers again and so yeah I wanted to keep the manifold pressure out of the yellow even but I had to uh, give it a little bit of juice just to get off the ground and then I pulled it back immediately after that superchargers are off I keep the superchargers off until uh, they are necessary for the climb and you can see there oil temp is still yellow and and maybe that's a problem and again the carburetor ice issue might have been the cause of all the problems we had thunderstorms this time around uh, not so many clouds that you would expect it but we did have thunderstorms and just taking a look everything looks copacetic and I'm trying to get everything in green but every time I get the pressures uh, the oil pressures in green the oil temperatures go into yellow so uh, it's tricky we get jostled about a bit by the weather nice view though as we continue out from Brazil so the carburetors are good and it's just uh, oil pressures right now give it a little bit more juice because we were losing speed there superchargers I'm looking at intently I keep looking at them but and eventually I turn them on here they are on but I wait and wait and wait for them so yeah now everything is in green the little iPad shows all green indicators now I could figure it out from the panel too but sometimes the panel seems to make it look all right and but the little pad uh, has it in yellow or something else so the pad seems more sensitive than the indicators on the panel now uh, sometimes they're not even in the yellow or anything like that and but the pad has them being a bit of a problem so uh, I basically went with this fixed view while the all pot was on and I started the all pot earlier but you can see we've lost an engine now this happened much later this is after five hours of flight, uh, five to five and a half hours. So we're making progress. Uh, we got five hours in before we lost an engine. And after that, things cascade pretty darn quickly, especially since I had set a lower uh, fuel flow and therefore a lower throttle. So we ultimately stalled out and started heading down sooner. And again, this is all on all pilot. I, I, I stopped in to pay attention a little bit, but you know, five hours I wasn't gonna sit there the whole time so yeah actually I was probably asleep at this point I mean it's a 13 hour flight uh, so engine 2 at least uh, was nice enough to give some yellow and orange indicators before it decided to die <laughs> uh, but yeah it's all bad so I have some experimentation and or tutorial watching to do uh, I think uh, the carburetors are definitely one thing I am Learning the startup procedure for this plane might be another thing that I should do. Yep, that's coming up. But I am finding things out about the plane, like it's not trivial to fly it across the Atlantic. Yeah, yep. So, which is good. I mean, when you get a payware plane, you expect it to have complexity to it. The goal is complexity. And this one uh, does have complexity. It is sheer complicated. So, I look forward to trying to figure it out and I will continue to try to fly it around the world. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.